What's up, people? It is Dave. It is Duncan. Back for another album review. And for this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new album from German alt rock three piece <laughs> Liotta Soul. I was close. I had France in my head, so, okay. right, so I, I wasn't. I wasn't Not that far away. away. It was just a border between them. <laughs> uh, the band's new album Worse will be released on November twenty fifth via Crod Records. What a name! Yeah, um, this is album number two from Leo Soul, which uh, was produced by Daniel Young at Lindberg Studios. Um, although originally hailing from Koblenz, Germany, I think that's the pronunciation, I'm not sure, uh, this three piece led by their multi talented frontman Sven Intvin have a nostalgic international sound that crosses borders and boundaries effortlessly. <laughs> Maybe into France, France? Yeah. <laughs> well they better watch what they were doing because the last time they crossed borders into France things got a bit hairy if you know what I mean so uh, when people say they don't make them like that anymore <laughs> they haven't heard this lot the record is called worse for two reasons explains Intvin one because one of the main topics covered on the record is deterioration both mental and physical mm-hmm. and two if someone was talking about the record they might say, Leota Soul are getting worse, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Which would make it a neat double entendre. <laughs> that kind of gallows humour is threaded tightly through this record and indeed all through all of the band's output. Honest, re- re- revelatory, uh, relatable subject matter delivered with a light-hearted, knowing grin. It's about finding humour in the worst aspects of life, says Infine. And that's been a coping mechanism I've been relying on for many years. We're really excited to see how people react to these tracks because we feel they are the best, the far, by far the best song we've written and also the best we have performed as musicians on a record so far. So, Duncan, um, I, I picked this album for a couple of reasons. Um, firstly, One of them is Duncan's going to like this, which I get the feeling you maybe that's where it started. <laughs> Was it by any chance? Kind, kind of. It was kind of like, but like recently we've done a lot of like really kind of dark and heavy albums. <laughs> like Have we? A lot of sludge, a lot of post metal. Um, so initially I was like, I listened to one of the singles. I was like, this is a little bit more upbeat. This might be a nice, a nice, nice change of pace. Um, and secondly, I thought this sounds like it could be a Duncan album. <laughs> so into the pile it went. And um, was I correct? Was it a Duncan album? I hate to be predictable, <laughs> um, but let's do it. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> this is great. This is absolute. This is so much fucking fun. This yeah. is such a fun fucking album. It's got bims. It's got swagger. It's got code switching and the old <laughs> musical styles all the way right through it. Yep. But like, like with all the best bands that have a lot in their arsenal mm. at no point was it one step too far for me and I'm including the bits where tracks close out with what we would describe as like French experimental hip hop yeah um, <laughs> everything in here including the lyrics which at times are depending on which way you look at them either wholly tragic and on the level of like a broken shattered life to that's very funny he's just talking about pissing in his jacket and they work all day <laughs> um so it depends it depends which way you look at that i yeah. chose to look at it with humor yes. um you might look at that and say that's not very nice <laughs> and unhygienic um so yeah like where to begin with this I'll tell you what it reminded me of like, oh, let's just strip it down to brass tacks here this mm. band seemed in a lot of respects if you took um, the Callous Dow Boys and removed every inch of Dillinger uh-huh. uh, and jazzy discordant stuff and just left all the, the stuff that was more marketable mm-hmm. um, and then packaged it up with weird lyrics and that's kind of where you're sitting with here Vocalist has a immensely catchy voice, mm. and it sits somewhere between almost. It's almost kind of like a Keith Butley "Every Time I Die" kind of raspy, screamy tone that he's got. Mm-hmm. Meets, uh, and I know people will get upset about this, but there's nothing I can do. It's just the way my ears hear things, <laughs> and thus put them out there. Mm. But he reminded me 
a little bit of Frontman from 30 Seconds to Mars, the actor dude whose name escapes me, but his kind of screamy tonal stuff. Oh, yeah. Jared kind of sim- yep. Yeah. Kind of similar to that. Um, but then he doesn't always do that. There's a lot of cleans in there where the rasp cuts out. Mm. And those tones are like really alt rock, like super, super commercial. Yeah. Um, in the background, you've got a mix of everything from kind of jangly guitars, kind of punky, almost kind of pop punky jumpy sections. You've got a bit of that kind of rock stylings of a Once Again and Every Time I Die, minus the technicality. Um, so like more focused straight down the middle there are moments of kind of melancholic sort of not despair but kind of the way where like it, like moments that reminded me of a slightly more aggro uh, Smashing Pumpkins mm. like you know it's kind of almost like darkly whimsical um, but never without the humour which I think really kind of aids them mm-hmm. um, lyrically it is a ton of fun it's a big ball of nuisance and fun and for the best reasons and they're not like he clearly I didn't know there were a three piece I would have said a five piece just because of the sheer volume of different instruments that are used here specifically the keys that are used in the background I would have yeah. just assumed there was more of them but you seeing that he's a multi-instrumentalist that kind of tax mm-hmm. so it makes sense um, they sound very full for a three piece if you know what I mean yeah those, I think the, the vocalist does guitars and the, the electronic type stuff as well yeah it does it sounds it sounds fuller the, 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 the overall sound um, so like with that happening as well I think when those elements are utilised whether it's on a track like Hypernormal or Medical Detectives um, which are names of songs on this album <laughs> um, those those bits really kind of open things up and even the closing track Beauty Silence which is it's kind of bittersweet and sad as well which is yeah. a, a theme through a couple of the albums we're going to be talking about um, in our, our bulk recording that we're doing um, it, it really fits the tone i think their biggest ar- arsenal their biggest like powerpoint here their biggest like through punch to the throat is how catchy the music is like yeah. and every single track has a hook like yeah. even when there's not supposed to be a hook even when they're going for something a bit more dry a bit darker mm-hmm. there's always a chorus that comes in which is there when the song finishes and you're still humming along to the melody um the lyrics are preposterous for the most part um, which makes them memorable. Like you, you end up memorizing lyrics that are silly, as yeah. well as the ones that really land with you. I think that's a clever art, yep. especially yep. when English isn't your first language. Like we talk about, like bands like Ramstein, who when they do sing in English, sing specifically provocative mm-hmm. lyrics. And the reason they sing particularly provocative lyrics is one, I imagine they're all deviants and perverts. Uh, but the second reason is. People will remember lyrics like "You have a pussy and I have a dick." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, as and like, literally, your homework's done. You know what I mean? Like, close the book, and they are the same. Like, like, when the opening kicked in, "Want You," I was like, "This is cool." It's got a bounce. It's got a bit of jump, and similar to another album we've talked about here, when it finished, I was kind of like, "All right," like it's an interesting choice for Dave. And then laugh kicked in, and I was smiling all the way through it. It's such a fucking good track. Yeah. uplifts and pushes and from that point onwards it catapults you mm. hard right throughout the album and that's the one with the playful like kind of French hip hop it's the only way I can describe it is if you've ever listened to French hip hop which I have done uh, and that's what kind of sounds like at the end mm. and there's no explanation as to why that's there it's just like that's the end of the song and I was like okay oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> nice yeah. uh, I don't even think they're singing in French but um <laughs> You know, it's, it's got a really catchy... Oh, everything's catchy here. And then from there, you're just catapulted through. So, like, when I mention the Callous Dowboys, the track that always comes, like, to the forefront of my mind is their closing track, Star Baby. Um, mm. And, it, like, the end of that song is just this big, brash, bold, colourful, bright, catchy ending to what was, up until that point, a hugely bizarre album. Yeah. And it's like, this album is that, just distilled on an album. It's short, it's eight songs long, it's done within half an hour. It's about 27, yeah. 28 minutes long. Mm. It, it does its business, it gets out, very memorable. Lastly, I'll say, love the production on this. It's like, it's got a grit, and it's got a bit of oomph behind it, it's not too polished. It does feel like there's kind of almost a... 
a kind of older feel to it. And when I say yep. older, I'm not saying 80s or 70s or anything like that. I mean kind of late 90s. There's a kind yep. of late 90s, mm, like yep. grab you by the balls, pull you through, sort of feel going on as well. So yeah, of all the albums you've sent me, surprise, surprise, this is the one I've listened to the most. <laughs> I think this is so much fun. I would love to see these guys live. Um, if, this, if this album was worse than their debut, then their debut must be... <laughs> fucking incredible um yeah they have a fan in me straight away like with no hard work or pushing at all they have easily got me in yes you called it dave yes you know me quite well i would like to think so we've known each other 22 years um so yeah like this is it is just i i was thinking about this i i wouldn't trust someone that disliked this album (laughs) Like, I mean that. I would think there was something wrong with them. If you can't listen to this album and enjoy it, and I'm giving you warnings right now, shots across the bow, right? If you listen to this album mm. and it doesn't make you smile, yeah. and you don't enjoy it, and you don't just get like a, a bounce in your step, mm. then I think that you're dead inside. <laughs> so it's just so much fun. I'd like it. It's like, it's like, it's like trying to give back a puppy that you really like you've had for like 20 minutes you've, that's your puppy now that's yeah. the law if you've had a puppy in your lap for 20 minutes it's your puppy sure. if you've listened to Leota Soul for 28 minutes <laughs> they're kind of your new favourite band so yeah. yeah I thought this was fucking great so um, I need to go and check this first album out now <laughs> uh, like I'm so so happy I've been singing laugh about this house to the point that everyone no longer wants to speak to me. <laughs> so, yeah. No one's laughing. No, no one is laughing. Uh, Dave, like, so you picked it for me. Mm. Was this, a, like, now you've seen how happy it made me. Yeah. That, in turn, will make you happy. But did the <laughs> album make you happy? Yeah, I mean, when I'd, I'd, I'd listened to one of the tracks, um, I think, I think had this been, like, just a kind of alt-rock type album, yeah. I'd have been like, hmm maybe pass on this um and this this does obviously have alt rock at its core yep. but this doesn't just sit within that genre and churn out a bunch of predictable alt rock tracks mm. um, this is definitely a bit more daring than that um, and i like that i like i like bands that are going to take a chance throw a bit of caution at the wind um it's risky you know it, it might turn out completely disjointed but no risk no reward okay. this is what they see dave this is this what is they what see. They see. <laughs> Um, I, I did re- I did really enjoy this. Um, nice. What, what I think they've they've done really well here is retain that alt rock sound, but experiment enough with other styles to give this an album um, a, a kind of diverse sound that it keeps you engaged like throughout the album. Um, and they give you it in such a, a short space of time, as you say, it's like twenty eight minutes. Yeah. But I think the length really works on this album. Um, it's great from a, a listening point of view because. Let's face it. When it comes to alt rock, you've kind of heard it all done before. You know the Get around the while. So. Yeah, the standard formula has been done to death. But um, Leota Soul have given you this great kind of balance of styles, but also given each track its own personality as well. Um, you've got a little bit of kind of grunge meets kind of alt rock and opener. Um, want you um, with a very, as you said, a very kind of nineties feel from from both genres. Um, yeah. And it's the same with the next track. And you've got a bit of that kind of late 90s, kind of early 2000s, almost like kind of pop punk on on Laugh. And it reminded um, be- me a weird, like there was a, a really obscure band in the UK called Ruben. Oh, yeah. Um, and Laugh reminds me of Ruben. Yeah. Like, it really, really, really does. Like, to, to a way where I was like, like after listening to this, I, I was listening to Ruben, <laughs> uh, which I haven't listened, I haven't listened to him in fucking years. Yeah. And their HD was kind of late nineties, early two yeah. thousand. So yeah. I like they have they've distilled that sound for sure. Definitely. The um, and then I was like totally hooked into that track. I was like, yeah, this is this is awesome. This is a banger. And then the end comes along, and it's like <laughs> this kind of dream pop meets like as you say, like kind of French kind of hip hop. And I was just like, what is going on here? Like electronic drum loops, and then yep. it's got this really like kind of synth laden kind of backdrop to it I was like and it's on for 30 seconds it's yeah. not it's not as if it's not like it's not like the end of fucking 
pollution by Limp Biscuit with sure. a little bit of fucking mouth drumming, uh, you know yeah. what I mean, for like 10 seconds and they fade out. No, 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 this is a whole song that's been, a whole 30 second music clip that's been recorded <laughs> and put on the end, inexplicably. Yeah, I mean, it, it totally works. works. Totally works. <laughs> it totally fucking works. Um, they, they transition it perfectly. It, it comes out of nowhere, but it doesn't feel like tacked on to the end. It's fused really well. Um, but I like that they didn't, just kind of drop that in and then like forget everything about it you know those yeah. the kind of dreamier parts and the kind of synth leads they, they do appear um throughout the album again you hear it on yeah. tracks like disgusting as well which has like a, a very 80s kind of synth driven groove to the verses yeah. but they hit you with this kind of big anthemic alternative chorus which really just mixes brilliantly um towards the end of the album was where um they start to show a bit more of a kind of serious side um yeah. as you said it's very kind of fun um, but then, the, as they as they kind of go through this, as they, towards the end, I'm glad they didn't give us a, a whole album of of just that. Um, I like that they've, they've shown you that a little bit, you know, of a, another side. Um, especially, I think when they moved into uh, hyper normal, yep. I think you hear that kind of darker melody start to come in. Um, the the kind of guitar lead works a little bit more as atmospheric, mm -hmm. um, and I felt like vocally it heard. Sven go to a more kind of emotional place. Um, mm. You could hear there's a bit of kind of agony in his voice, um, but as as quick as they show you that kind of emotive <laughs> kind of darker side, it's like we're right on to medical detectives, and they yeah. kind of pick you right back up, yeah, which yeah. is far more optimistic sounding. Still a bit of kind of angst in the vocals, but again a different tone. Um, the vocals were really interesting to me. Um, He's got range, man. He's got yeah. like a really interesting range. He rem that's what I'm talking about. Listening to him, I was picking out four or five different vocalists who he kind of yeah. sounds like, and but it, doesn't well, sound identical to. It's like he, yeah. but he manages to. Well, it's, the, it's not easy. There's a lot of singers who, by default, have a raspy mm -hmm. voice. Like mm -hmm. when they sing, it's yeah. rasp because they're, usually their main motive is they scream. So when they transition over, the voice retains that rasp. He is the other way around. He he has this really beautiful, clean voice mm -hmm. that it just seems to have like a distortion pedal for that he can switch to. Yeah. Just clicks it on and he hits it to that rasp, but he doesn't lose any of the control mm. on yeah. the notes. He still hits everything pitch perfect, which is not an easy thing to yeah. do. So, and what is more, even more kind of mind blowing is I was like, I wonder like what he sounded like on the last album. Was this like a you know similar type vocal? So I went back and I was like, the first, the last album was called Hopper. And I was listening to that album and I was like, where's the like where is where's the kind of raspy the raspy tone? I was like, ah. I'm not hearing this at all on this album. There's there's a definite push vocally on this album. Yep. Um vocal sounded good on the last album, but I feel like he's he's reaching into new places on, on worse. Uh, both kind of stylistically and dynamically. Um it, it tended to kind of stick in the middle a lot on the last album. Yep. Um, but this time he's given you kind of the sides around that. So he's given you a kind of more kind of gentle, kind of delicate side, uh, like on the like on the closing track, uh, Beauty Salons. But then he's also pushing this more kind of gritty side of his voice on like tracks like Star. And, and that raspy side sounds unbelievably good. Like I couldn't really understand good. why he wasn't doing it before. Yeah. Um, I think that part of his voice it makes the track sound even bigger in places mm -hmm. um there's more of a kind of dynamic shift um and it's, it's it sounds more believable the impact is bigger um i think in general his melodies this time this time around are even stronger um the, the hooks go on a bit deeper mm -hmm. um and i think he's, he's found a, a nice sweet spot with the level of emotion you know without you know it doesn't go too far on it um i found like there was times i thought if he pushed the, the emotion too far it might even lead into like kind of emo type territory yeah, but it, it never lets over. it get to, to that point um yeah i found this really easy to listen to um it is, it's only 28 minutes obviously but <laughs> even if it was longer i think it would still you would still give this repeat plays like yeah. each track has something different it doesn't become um you know just the, the same track on on loop but it's not predictable um and it's got a bit of humor to it as well i, I like the fact they don't take themselves too seriously um, and if you like, if you listen to the album, have a listen to like disgusting, and you'll hear exactly what I mean lyrically. It's yeah. quite out, it's there, out but, there. Yeah, it's out there, but it's catchy. It's like uh, it's so catchy. You know, it's like um, another like uh, if you think of like the the presidents of the United States of America, that first album. Yes. Lyrics are batshit crazy, but I could recite that album from start to finish, and yeah. it doesn't even make sense. 
yeah. but it's one of those albums that will stick in your head and this is kind of like that it's just a bit kind of weird and off the wall but again very memorable yeah. sometimes um, lyric like I, I i like i appreciate a good lyricist but yeah. sometimes it's just the melody like yeah, sometimes true. the melody is what's the the bit that you love and when you sit and spend a little bit of time thinking about what the lyrics actually mean a lot of times they don't mean anything yeah. <laughs> like yeah. like as someone that used to write lyrics i used to pain spain painstakingly spend a lot of time trying to write things that meant mm. stuff yeah however when we were in our band Arguably the most fun song we ever had to play was kind of co-written by us in a couple of seconds, and the lyrics meant nothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but yeah. it was it was a catchy, upbeat, bouncy yeah. song, and sometimes that's all you need. So mm. you can afford to be a bit more creative and a bit more off the wall with it, and it certainly benefits. Mm. Certainly, yeah. I would love to hear people singing "Disgusting" back at the band. <laughs> yeah. Just the same yeah. way when we saw Steak recently, yeah, and they they started singing the song about the banana. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just seeing everyone in the crowd like singing about ban and about like you're just like, what the fuck are we doing here? Just sometimes it's sometimes it works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fun with this. Um, it's it's nostalgic in a way, yep. um, but it's got enough enough freshness to keep you engaged throughout the album. Yeah, fun album, definitely. Um, okay, so scores. What are we thinking? What would we rate um, this new album for Leota Soul? What, what did you score uh, worse? I gave it a four. I think this is absolutely fucking great. I, yep. I, like, I will once again, like many other albums this year, I will be playing this a lot towards mm. the end of the year. And the next year, I, I honestly, and I genuinely mean it, if you don't like this album, I honestly don't know what's going on <laughs> in your life. I don't know. You might have to bring the bear into the room and you might have to point the bear and see where you were like touched <laughs> like, I, I just don't understand how anyone couldn't have a good time with this album yeah. it just and clearly they are like that that press statement so why i don't like reading press statements um <laughs> that press statement like you can they're in on the joke they understand what they're doing mm. and it turns out they can back it up they can back up every step of the way uh yeah i, I thoroughly fucking enjoyed this album uh they, they're on the radar and hopefully I see this a lot these days. Hopefully they get over here. I would fucking love to see these guys live. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, I would totally agree. Yeah, 4 out of 5 from me as well. Um, really enjoyed this. Um, and yeah, I agree. I think there's there's something for everyone on this. There's definitely um, tons of hooks. Um, and there's a lot, of, a lot of personality on this as well, which, yeah. is, which is really important. Um, so, 4 out of 5 from me. Um, the album drops on the 25th of November on crod k-r-o-d records um let us know what you think i'll put some links below to the crod band or k-rod because K- well, k-rod now sounds like an american station that you get somewhere in the desert somewhere <laughs> you're listening to k-rod <laughs> on the midnight hour coming up we have the other soul <laughs> see uh, it writes itself it and it. disgusting <laughs> um, there we go See? Uh, links below to the band uh, any pre-orders for the album check it out um, let us know what you think stick some comments in below that is the review thank you for checking it out we'll be back with another review very soon but until then take care speak to you soon bye everyone Cause you're